From Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, the latest on the Ukraine crisis and getting the Middle East peace process back on track. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. Ukrainian officials have alleged that the mass killing of protesters in Kiev in February took place on the orders of ousted President Viktor Yanukovych and that Russian security service agents helped him plan and carry out the assault. Russia's Federal Security Service responded to the charges with an unnamed spokesman who said, and I quote, let those allegations remain on the conscience of the Ukrainian Security Service. Mr. Yanukovych, who fled Kiev in February after months of anti-government protests, said Wednesday he was wrong to invite Russia's troops into the Crimean Peninsula. Israel canceled the planned release of a fourth group of Palestinian prisoners over the Palestinian leadership pursuit of further United Nations recognition. Israeli Justice Minister Sipi Livni says Palestinian actions violated the conditions for the release, which were contingent on Palestinians refraining from making unilateral moves. Israeli Foreign Minister of Vignor Lieberman's office says he will fly to the U.S. on Friday for talks on the crisis, including a meeting next week with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. Mr. Kerry spoke by telephone Thursday and Israeli with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas after both sides broke parts of an agreement on talks toward a two-state solution. VOA Scott Stearns has more. Secretary Kerry says U.S. negotiators met with Israeli and Palestinian officials in overnight talks that lasted until four in the morning in an effort to move the peace process forward. I think it is uh, a critical moment, obviously. The dialogue remains open. There was progress made in narrowing some of the questions that have arisen as a result of the events of the last few days, but there's still a gap. Kerry says Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas both understand what the choices are and what the stakes are, as well as their own limits and dynamics. He says the fight here is not over the fundamental substance of a final status agreement on a two-state solution, but rather over the process to get there. Scott Stearns, VOA News, Algiers. Turkey's government lifted its ban on the social media network Twitter a day after the country's top court said it violated free speech. Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan had ordered the ban two weeks ago after Twitter used to circulate audio files implicated the prime minister and his son of corruption. Public access to the video sharing website YouTube, however, remains blocked in Turkey. An Associated Press report says the U.S. government secretly financed a social network in Cuba in an effort to stir political unrest and undermine the country's communist government. The program evaded Cuba's internet restrictions by creating a so-called Cuban Twitter text messaging service that could be used to organize political demonstrations. The network reportedly drew in tens of thousands of subscribers who were unaware it was backed by the U.S. government. Associated Press says the USAID project lasted more than two years. AP report says it's unclear whether the project was legal under U.S. law. Meantime, on Thursday, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said the so-called Cuban Twitter was a development program, not a covert operation. Malaysia's Prime Minister visited Australia on Thursday to speak with crews involved in the search for the missing Malaysian Airlines passenger jet. VOA Steve Herman has details. Tony Abbott spoke alongside his Malaysian counterpart during a visit to an Australian Air Force base where multinational teams are staging a search, the Australian leader terms, the most difficult in human history. We will not rest until 
We have done everything we humanly can. Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak told reporters he remains hopeful something will be found. But the new refined area of search has given us new hope. Efforts are now focused on waters about 1,600 kilometers off Australia's northwest coast. Steve Herman, VOA News, Bangkok. And the Malaysia Airlines Boeing 777 vanished almost a month ago on a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. Former Pakistan military leader Pervez Musharraf survived an assassination attempt on Thursday when a bomb exploded. After his motorcade drove by, no one was injured. There has been no claim of responsibility. Get more news by going to our website. You can find us at voanews.com.